Today is a big day. We are about to get the new Apple Silicon M1 in the Mac Mini and it's going to come with 8 gigs of RAM but the 512 hard drive. And what we want to do is pitch it in a different way from what we've seen so far online. There's some really good videos, technical videos with benchmarks on graphics and processors. But what we want to do is do the real world stuff. So this is more about gaming, streaming, uh, and that kind of thing, and how it's going to fit in with that, and if it's going to fit in with that. Charles here. Hello. <laughs> who has a two, mid-2012 MacBook Pro. So it's a fantastic machine. It's 8 gig, it's 512 SSD from you. Um, he didn't have it from you because he would have been about two. But anyway, um, it's got all the latest software on it. It's, it's ready to roll. But we want to test it because when he uses that, with his streaming, and what kind of streaming do you use? Um, I use YouTube streaming on Elgato Game Capture HD 60S. Okay, and what are the game, games you use? Um, well, you can use any Xbox game or any console game, uh, as long as you have the HD 60S, or just the HD 60. Um, so what do you do, you record in the game? Yeah, you record the game in the software on a computer. So you're doing the Game Capture, and do you play games on it as well? Uh, I play games on my Mac, I play mostly Minecraft on my Mac and everything else in the Xbox. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to test all that, we're going to see how it runs, because at the moment the fans run mad. So when he uses the webcam and he's doing his streaming and he's game capturing all at the same time, the whole lot obviously slows right down. Um, so yeah, so we're going we're gonna to see how it runs together and then we're going to put the M1 by the side of it, or replace it, and do exactly the same again and see how that goes. Let's quickly look at the CPU scores and what we've got access to. So we've got Charles's MacBook 2012. We've got my Mac Mini Intel 2018 i7 with 32 gigs of RAM and the new M1, eight gigabyte version. So no real surprises in the CPU scores for single or multi-core. It's the GPU and the frames per second where it really comes into its own. Um, the mid-2012 though, really close. It's using the NVIDIA GeForce 650M, so that was a bit of a graphics card in its day. Then you've got my 2018, which is really low, surprisingly low, and the new M1, where, as you can see, it just blasts through. So let's take that on board and see how these perform with the real-life tests. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We're running from the Xbox, which is under the desk, via the Xbox controller to the screen. And just to prove how fast the M1 is, which we couldn't do before on the Mac uh, but Pro 2012, we're running through the Elgato Game Capture card, through the M1, and up onto this screen. And what Charles is going to do is that he's going to look at the Mac screen rather than the Xbox screen just to prove that there's literally no delay and how fast it is. And while he's doing that, he can actually screen capture or stream live uh, without dropping any frames, I hope. So, go Should for it. Should work? All right, so let's hit play. Should, do you want me to record or stream? You can do either. Okay. All right, so now we're joining the game and we're gonna watch this one. So purely Xbox on left hand side, directly connected to that screen in the corner on the left, and then the Mac screen on the right, connected to the M1, uh, and they are connected together by the game capture card. Yeah, pretty So much. it works. It does. And how are the fans running on the M1? Literally, I've never heard the fans on this machine. There's nothing. Nothing. Is it cold? Uh, I'd imagine so. It's freezing. That's incredible. Yeah, the frames are really good on the screen. I'm honestly torn between which one I should be watching. It doesn't look like there's any delay whatsoever. It's, that doesn't look like there is, no. Amazing. Okay, so a massive upgrade, even with a dedicated graphics card from a 2012 machine. But um, if anyone was wondering, you can definitely game capture now with uh, a game capture card, software, straight from your Xbox or I guess PlayStation if you've got one of those. So basically what's happened is we've plugged in two monitors and a minute ago this screen here was connected to the Xbox just directly and now what we can do is, which I just found out, um, this here as you can see is actually part of the Mac meaning that we can just play Xbox in the software which is just amazing on Mac. 
So the Xbox isn't connected to either of the displays. Either it's just running display. directly through the Mac. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. that means you could screen record, stream at full rates and everything. Yeah, but what, what it also means, which is even better, is we don't even have to have a screen connected to the Xbox. We can have them both connected to Mac. Excellent. So that means you can drag it over to this side then, does it? Yeah. And then we can just go full screen here and do whatever we want on this screen whilst we're gaming. Huh. That's awesome. Isn't it? Not something I'd use, but great for you. <laughs> it's the exact kind of thing I'd use. So let's have a look at the next scenario. So I've been doing some testing and shaders work pretty well, I would say. As you can see, there are some things moving, which if you know Minecraft does not happen normally. The water is moving, the leaves are blowing, everything is running really smoothly and I can't hear a single fan. And my hand is on the new Mac now and it is just, just about warm. And it is still not as warm as the Mac mini 2018. And my dad upgraded that so it has 32 gigs of RAM, which is just mental if you think about it. Oh yeah, and with the shaders on, we're running at around 30 FPS. Okay, so you can see there are real people here now, and there are things going on. And we're at a constant 24, 25, 26. It's sort of getting better, but as you can see, there's a whole bunch of people over here. So when I sort of look over there, my frames will drop. Oh yeah, and that was the most popular Minecraft server. Alright, let's take these shaders off and see how it runs normally. As you can see, it's running absolutely buttery smooth. And this is with recording software open as well, don't forget. 172, 156. This is what it's like in the lobby, getting around 120 frames, 136. Yeah, so once turning on the shaders again, it does take a bit for it to load. Probably because Minecraft isn't actually optimized on M1 chips yet. Okay, so now I'm going to go on about a problem that I had earlier. So I remember my dad telling me that you can connect a wireless controller. So I opted for my Xbox controller. I connected it with Bluetooth, worked absolutely fine. I then booted up Minecraft again, just to give it a try, see if it worked with the controller. And from game version 1.13 upwards, it just crashed my game. I couldn't even see the Mojang symbol. However, everything beneath 1.13 was working. So I tried 1.12. And that worked perfectly. I could just play Minecraft on 1.12 and below. So I disconnected the controller and nothing happened still. It was still crashing and nothing was really working. So I did what any human being would do and I checked if there was an update to macOS. And as if by magic there was. So I did that, took around 20 minutes maybe, even on the new Mac. But that could have just been because of our Wi-Fi. And it completely fixed the problem. So my advice is, if you are here to game on the new Macs, then make sure you update it first just to ensure that, that never happens to you. For my last point that I want to make, I just want to say that I've never, ever heard the fans on this machine. It is insane. Even right now when I'm running these shaders, it's having to load 12 chunks and I can't even hear it. It's still so cold. All right, so that's enough from me. Back to you, Dad. All right, so next test, what have we got? Well, um, I have OBS on here and what I'm actually playing on over here. And as you can see, we can record uh, what we're about to see. So you've got, this is record OBS recording software, is it? Yeah. So these screens are both running directly off the Mac Mini. And that's the camera. That's the camera up there. That's the scene. So you're gonna stream your, what is your uh, Minecraft game yeah. with a picture in picture as well, which is from the camera that's on top of your Mac. Yeah. And you can choose the size of the size of that, I suppose. But okay, so you're going to stream that. And what normally happens on your other computer? Um, well, I it literally every time I booted up OBS, it would just crash. It yeah. wouldn't even give me the option to do anything on OBS, um, let alone record and play Minecraft at the same time. Cool. And what about delay of the camera? Because normally, I know in the past that's been an issue for you when you actually did sometimes get it to run. Yeah, well, if you see the lip sync, it's almost perfect. By almost, I mean maybe a few fractions of a second off, but it's no longer in a second. So the M1 seems to be performing really well. There's no fans, there's still no fans, and it's as cool as a cucumber. It really is. That's amazing. Mm. Power efficient. Yeah, what absolutely. What can I say? So, and that's just, that's just the eight gigabyte version. So really this is a, this is a success. Yeah, I would say massive, huge success. You're gonna enjoy this when you get it. Damn straight I am. Woohoo, can't wait. Yeah, video editing gonna be crazy, especially when they optimize it as well. Is it? Oh yeah, that's true. None of this is running on 
aren't optimized for the silic for silicon yet. It's all Rosetta 3. Yeah. So other than that on your games, over the couple of days you've now had it mm. or been testing it, is there anything else that you've noticed? I was quite surprised about the shaders, if I'm being honest. I thought that using shaders in Minecraft would get at least more than 26, 30 frames. Um, especially when normally without shaders, it's running at like 180, 130. It's, I don't know, it was just, it came as quite a big shock to me. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? A bad thing. It's, um, well, not, not terrible. I mean, you can still run the game, which is further than what my old Mac could do. Sorry, better than what my old Mac could do. Yeah. But, you know, it's hmm. for revolutionary tech. It was quite surprising to me. For something so small, though, yeah, it's, and for it's the price, really good. Really it's good. massively different. You can do everything now that you wanted to do. Mm. Cool. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. So it was a bit of a interesting test that one because uh, we didn't quite know what we were going to expect. We thought we know, but you know, it was a, it was a challenge. I can't tell you because let's be honest, we are not technical experts. We think we know what we're doing. We're okay at it. We enjoy it. And that's probably the best bit because we it's a bit of fun. But uh, yeah, so I think the M1 is fantastic. It is faster graphics. It's not the fastest, but it's damn good for its size and price. It's very, very quiet, not a peak from it. It's very, very cool to the touch. It doesn't even get warm. Like my Mac Mini, even when it's in sleep mode, my 2018 version yeah. is warm. Um, you want one? Sure. <laughs> Christmas is coming. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, I hope you like this one. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. And we'll hopefully see you in the next video. Yeah. See you. Bye.